Hello and welcome. Today we shall be solving exponential equations. Now these are equations that are in index form and the unknown appears as a power, an index or exponent. For example, you have to solve 2 raised to the power x equal to 4. This is clearly an exponential equation because the unknown here x appears as some power of a base 2. Now to solve such equations, the step is very straightforward. You try to make both sides, both sides to have same base, same base. So in the case where your equation involves just two terms like this, one, two, the step is to make both sides, rather I missed both here, beg your pardon, make both sides to have the same base. So here I have two raised to the power x and four. The base on the left hand side is 2, while the base on the right hand side is 4. So the question is, can I make both, because this is 4 to the power 1. So can I make both have same base? The answer is yes, because I can write 4 to have base 2. So I can simply write this as 2 raised to the power x equal to, I can write 4 as 2 raised to the power 2. So that 2 times 1 is still 2. Now the base on the left hand side is 2, and the base on the right hand side is 2. So once the bases are the same, I will now equate the powers. So equate exponent or powers or index. I will now equate exponent. If I do that, the exponent on the left hand side is x, on the right hand side is 2. And that is my answer, x equal to 2. And if you come here and check, it will be true. 2 raised to the power x. If I put x as 2, what do I get? 2 raised to the power 2, and that is what? 4, which is correct. Let's take another example. Um, let us solve 16 raised to the power x equal to 0 0.125. This is another example of an exponential equation because the unknown x appears as some power of a base 16. So the idea is the same. There are two terms here. And for this kind of case, we simply try to make both sides to have the same base. So the left-hand side is 16. The right-hand side is 0 0.125. Once we are able to express the left and the right hand sides in terms of the same base, we can just equate the powers and that will be all. So let us start. We have a decimal here. The first thing we want to do is to convert this to a fraction. So this is 16 raised to the power x is equal to 0 0.125 simply means 125 divided by 1000. Because if you divide this by 1000, you get 0 0.125. So and we can, we can also divide further because 125 can go into 1000 and that will be 8 times. So that is 1 over 8. Let me write it out. So we have 16 raised to the power x equal to 1 over 8. Let us recall from our indices that a raised to the power minus 1 is equal to what? 1 over a. Which means that 1 over a can be written also as a raised to the power minus 1. I want to apply that here. So left hand side is 16 raised to the power x. I can write the right hand side as 8 raised to the power minus 1. So it now has a base. So the base here is 8 and the base here now is 16. Why am I doing this? Because I know already that I'm trying to make both sides to have the same base. So I must express the right hand side in terms of some base. The base on the left is 16, while the base on the right is 8. They are different bases. So can I make them the same base? The answer again is yes. I can write 16 as 2 raised to the power 4, and then the x is outside. I can write 8 as 2 raised to the power 3, and I have minus 1 outside. On the laws of indices which we have learned in our previous video, if we have two powers, one power in the bracket and the other one outside the bracket, the law says you multiply both powers out, right? Good. So this gives us 2. 4 times x is 4x. Equal to 2. 3 times minus 1 is negative what? 3. Now I have same basis, you know, same base on both sides. Since on the left hand side I have base 2, right hand side I have base 2, it is now time to equate base. So power rather. So I will now equate index or equate exponent or equate powers. Whichever one you choose to write is okay. So the power or the index on the left hand side is 4x. Right hand side is negative 3. I want to find the value of x. So if I divide here by negative, by 4 rather, divide both sides by 4 by 4. 4 will knock off 4 
and my x is left as negative 3 over 4. So that's the value of x. So if you put negative 3 over 4 in place of x, you can get we will get 0 0.125. That's an exponential equation. However, if our equation, exponential equation, involves three terms or more, the procedure will be a little bit more, you know, tedious than this. I shall show you that with two more examples. For example, for example, solve 4 raised to the power x minus 10 into 2 raised to the power x plus 16 equal to 0. So here, the trick to solving this one is this. There are three terms. This is the first term, second term, and third term. And only two terms have the power of x. 2 raised to the power x and 4 raised to the power x. So there are two tricks we are going to perform. The first trick here is those two terms that have x must have same base. Must have same base. Here, the base here is 4, the base here is 2. That is not what we want. We want them to have the same base. If it is 4, let it be base 4 and base 4. If it is 2, let it be base 2 and base 2. That's the first thing we have at the back of our minds. The second thing we want is that both bases must carry x directly on top. Like what we have here, 2 is carrying x on top. That is good. And if this was 2, it should be carrying x on top. That would be perfect. So the first thing is that they must have the same base. And the second condition is that they must all be carrying the unknown x directly, you know, as their powers. So what is wrong with this problem right now? This 4 that carries x, is diff the base here is different from the base here. So I can, I can express 4 in terms of base 2. So I start with 4. I can write 4 as 2 raised to the power 2 or raised to the power x indices minus 10 2 raised to the power x plus 16 equal to 0. I've achieved that. The base here is now 2. The base over here is 2. However, here 2 is carrying x directly as its power. But over here 2 is carrying 2 directly as its power and it's carrying x outside the bracket. I don't want that. However, by indices, I know that if I, if I bring in the x in and take the 2 out, it doesn't change anything because 2 times x is 2x. If I bring in x and 2 outside, x times 2 is still 2x. So I can rewrite this now as 2 and I'll put the x up inside rather and take the 2 out minus 10 into 2 raised to the power x plus 16 equal to 0. The two things I wanted have been found. One, the terms that have power of x both have the same base and they are carrying x directly as their powers. Once I get to this stage, I now do the following substitution. I say let, for example, p be equal to what? Or let, if you like, let 2 raised to the power x, this term inside the bracket, equal to p. I call this equation 1. Now, wherever I see 2 raised to the power x here, I will put the value of p. I'll put p. This will help me simplify the problem. So here it becomes, so 2 raised to the power x is p. So this is p. This is square outside. That becomes p squared minus 10. What is here? This is the same thing as p again. Plus 16 equal to 0. So this is clearly p squared minus 10p plus 16 equal to 0. And this is what a quadratic equation. In our previous videos, we have learned how to solve such equations. So feel free to pause the video and go back to that if you have issues solving this. So I'll just solve this using the method of what factorization. So I can write this as p square minus 8p minus 2p plus 16 equal to 0. Since minus 8p minus 2p is minus 10p. And minus 8 times minus 2 is 16. I can now factorize. I can factorize. So, in my first bracket, I can factorize p, and I have p minus 8. Second bracket, I can factorize minus 2. I have p minus 8 equal to 0. So, let me check if I'm correct. p times p is p squared. p times minus 8 is minus 8p. Minus 2 times p is minus 2p. Minus 2 times minus 8 is 16. So I have p minus 8 and p minus 2 equal to 0. So this means that p minus 8 is 0 or p minus 2 is 0. Which means that p is equal to 8 or p is equal to 2. It's not time to rejoice yet. 
because I have not solved the problem. The question was given and the unknown was X. The unknown was not P. So we have to go back to getting our solution in terms of X. So we must recall that we had said something here that let through the power X be P. So don't forget that. In fact, I want us to recall it. So recall. Recall what we said. What did we say? We said that let through the power X be what? Be P. So each value of P should produce a value of X. Not all the time, but in most cases it does. So for the first value of P, where P is what? P is 8. We simply come back to here, to what we have recalled, and where we have P, we put 8. So if we do that, we have 2 raised to the power X is equal to 8. And what is this? An exponential equation with two terms. And we know what to do. We simply have to express both sides in terms of the same base. So we have 2 raised to the power X equal to 2 raised to the power 3. Since 2 raised to the power 3 is 8. Now the bases are the same. What do we do? We equate the powers. We equate powers. If we do that, we have that X is equal to 3. And that's our first solution. Second solution is for P equal to 2. So when P is equal to 2, we go back to equation star. We have 2 to the power X equal to 2. And of course, 2 simply means 2 to the power 1. So here, we already have the same base. So we equate powers once again. We equate powers once again. If we do that, we have that X is equal to 1. So the solution to our exponential equation, 4 to the power X minus 10 into 2 to the power X plus 16 equal to 0, are X equal to 3 and X equal to what? Oh, beg your pardon. X equal to 1. Another example, solve 3 to the power 2X plus 1 minus 4 into 3 to the power X plus 1 plus 9 equal to 0. This is also an exponential equation with three terms. First term, second term, and a third term. Like we did in the previous example, the steps are still the same. We try to make both terms that have x, which is which are these, to have 1, the same base. And in this case, we are lucky. The base here is 3. The base here is 3. Good enough. Apart from having the same base, what did you carry directly on the eye? as their power should be x. In this case, it's carrying x plus 1. We don't want that. We want just x. In this case, it has 2x plus 1. We don't want that. We want it to have just power x directly, you know, to it. So the only way we can break this down to have such a form is to employ our knowledge of indices once again. So we should recall from our indices, let's come over here, that a raised to the power m times a raised to the power n is equal to what? A raised power m plus n. Which means that a raised power m plus n is the same thing as a raised power n times a raised power n. So look at this as this. Where your m is 2x and your n is what? Plus 1. So we want to apply this law of indices to break down both terms that contain x. From that law of indices, we can break this down as 3 raised to power 2x I'm using dot now for times, times 3 raised to the power 1. Because if you go back, this is the same thing as this. The base is 3. I take the base and add the exponents, 2x plus 1. I'll get this back. Minus 4 into 3x times 3 raised to the power 1. Again, the same rule. Plus 9 equal to 0. Now, this is carry 2x. I want to carry just x. So I can rewrite this as 3 to carry x. And what will be outside? It will be 2. Since x times 2 is the same thing as 2x times 3. 3 to the power 1 is 3. Minus 4 into 3 to the power x times 3 again plus 9 equal to 0. I've achieved what I want because 1. These terms that have x both have the same base. And in addition to that, they are carrying x as an immediate power. Once I get that stage, I now make the substitution. Let I can now say 3 raised to the power x be equal to g since it must not be p. Once I have said this, then my equation 1, I called 1, will now reduce to the following 3 raised to the power x is now g, so this becomes g squared times 3 minus 4 into 3 raised to the power x is g times 3 plus 9 equal to 0. g squared times 3 
is 3g squared minus g times 3 is 3g times 4 minus 12g plus 9 equal to 0. Again, this is a quadratic equation. But here I'm lucky because I can divide through by 3. Yes, I can divide through by 3. And I'll get g squared minus 4g plus 3 equal to 0. And once again, I can solve this by method of factorization. So, I can write this as g squared minus 3g minus g plus 3 equal to 0. Minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4. Minus 3 times minus 1 is plus 3. I can now factorize. In the first bracket, I can factorize g. I'll have g minus 3. Here I have minus 1 g minus 3 equal to 0. g times g is g squared. g times minus 3 is minus 3g. Minus 1 times g is minus g. Minus 1 times minus 3 is plus 3. So that is correct. So this now gives me g minus 3 and uh, g minus 1 equal to 0. So I have g minus 3 and g minus 1 equal to 0. If I now solve for g, this means that g minus 3 is 0 or g minus 1 is 0. So that g is equal to 3 or g is equal to 1. Once again, it is not yet time to rejoice because the question was given in the variable x and not in the variable g. So I must go back to what I had said. So I had said, let 3 to the power x be g. So I want to recall what I said earlier. Recall that 3 to the power x is equal to g. So now, each value of g should produce at least one value of x. So for the first value of g, so when g is equal to 3, what happens? I can now write this as 3 to the power x equal to 3. Exponential equation in two terms. So what do I do? I express both sides to have the same base. And in this case, they have already. So I can write 3 as 3 to the power 1. And I equate powers. If I do that, I have that x is equal to 1. The power on the left hand side is x. Right hand side is 1. So x equal to 1 is our first solution. Now, so the second value of g, so g equal to 1. Again, I have 3 to the power x equal to 1. The expression equation in two terms. I must make both sides or write both sides in terms of the same base. So how do I do it? This is 3, this is 1. But I remember again from my indices that any base to power 0 is 1. So 100 to power 0 is 1. 1000 to power 0 is 1. Since that is true, and what I have here is, what I need here, I'm looking for a base 3. I can write this as 3 raised to the power 0, since it's the same thing as 1. With that, the base on the left hand side is 3, right hand side is also 3. So I equate powers. And I have that x is equal to 0. So x equal to 0 and x equal to 1 are the two solutions of my exponential equation. You can try on your own to solve 2 raised to the power 2x plus 1 minus 3 into 2 raised to the power x plus 1 equal to 0. And leave your answers in the comment section below. Thank you and bye-bye.